Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations, where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. Uh, and we are now officially in Trinity Tide. Uh, back on Sunday, we celebrated the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity. Uh, and of course, we I hope we drove home the point, uh, if you are watching or participating live, the reality that we will never understand God in Trinity while we are on this side of the veil. Uh, but when we see God face to face, then it will be revealed to us how it is that we can have one God and three persons. Uh, so we just, we thank God for him. Uh, and most importantly, we worship him and we praise him and we magnify him, right? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now, on Thursday and then again on Sunday, we will have another big feast day, and that uh, is coming up as Corpus Christi. Uh, and then we'll get into the long season of Trinity Sundays. Uh, and so starting Trinity Tide, uh, we have jumped into the book of Numbers. Uh, now, the book of Numbers is one of the stories, uh, the books that record for us the stories of Moses. Of course, the first five books are known as the books of Moses. Uh, and we have some of the stories of the conflicts that were happening between Moses and the people of Israel. Remember that it was not smooth sailing. As soon as the people of Israel were freed from their bondage and uh, God, through the intercession of Moses, uh, parted the Red Sea and they went through on dry land, uh, and then the water crushed down upon the Egyptians who were chasing after them, uh, very quickly the people start murmuring. You know, would have been better, goodness gracious, it would have been better had we starved to death under the, the yoke of Pharaoh, uh, I'm sorry, of been work, eaten under the yoke of Pharaoh, uh, then starved to death here in the wilderness, and so God provides manna. So uh, today's uh, particular lesson is in chapter 16, uh, and we have another uprising. Uh, we hear of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, uh, and the three of them have decided that Moses and Aaron uh, are really taking too much on their own responsibilities. And they, they're like, look, we're all holy too. Uh, why shouldn't we have some authority and some charge here? And so Moses uh, goes to God and, and brings this uh, to God in prayer and in conversation. We know Moses talks with God. Uh, and so it is that uh, God at first says, well, you, you know what? Why don't the two of you just step back in your families and I will just destroy the rest of them and we'll start over again. Uh, and it's Moses who intercedes for the people of Israel. Moses does not want that to happen. Uh, although I'm sure Moses is getting quite frustrating with all the complaining, frustrated with all the complaining. Uh, Moses does not want that. And, and so we hear this in chapter 16, uh, uh, beginning at verse 21. Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake with Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Nebiram. And Moses rose up and went to Dathan and Nebiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out, and stood in the door of their tents, and at their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. And if these men die, the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. This is Moses speaking. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth swallow up her mouth, open her mouth, and swallow them up, and all that appertain unto them, and they go down back into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as they made an end of speaking these words, that the ground clave asunder and was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and their goods. They that appertaineth to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord, it consumed two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. So, uh, thanks be to God that we don't have incidents like this now uh, in our time. 
that the God of mercy uh, does not act like this. But we cannot rule out the fact that, in fact, God was doing something in particular with the people of the Jews in freeing them and ultimately were bringing them into the promised land for that unique relationship he had with them. And rebellion uh, was not to be tolerated. Uh, and so we hear that these people who wanted to rebel against God and do their own thing uh, end up getting the just reward uh, for their sins. Uh, and they are separated from the congregation and die. Thanks be to God, we do not get what we deserve, right? We play, beg and implore God's mercy. Obviously, we cannot be in open rebellion against God, right? We must be one who is living in accordance with his will. And then when we fail, we repent and quickly return unto the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, that's our, our message for today, right? And we'll look more at numbers in the coming weeks, uh, as well as the readings from the Acts of the Apostles. We jump into Luke's gospel as well here in Trinity Tide. So we have all these great opportunities for us to look at the scripture, and I encourage you to do so. Today is Tuesday. Uh, we have Holy Communion at 12.15 and evening prayer at 5 o'clock. And both of those can be attended in person or on, uh, on live stream on our Facebook page, stjohnsdetroit.org. And I hope you have a blessed Tuesday.